peeps. Welcome back in. Um, today it's just me <laughs> and I, every once in a while, I love to dive into a reality show or some kind of movie. And really I start thinking with like, you know, my brain of like, what kind of trauma are they going through or what's happening here? What's behind the scenes? I always am thinking like I'm rewriting scripts in my mind. It's just the way my mind works. And so once again, <laughs> my daughter Dominique got me sucked into, if you haven't seen this reality show, I'll give you a little premise of it, but she sucked me into another season of Love is Blind, which it didn't take a lot of arm twisting because that show you can decipher all kinds of things um, if you're looking at these personalities and boy let me tell you social media was blowing up with the same couples that I was interested in the same kind of things where I was like what is happening and so let me just give you bear with me if you don't watch reality tv I just want to talk about some of the the things that I see going on in this show and with these people and I know that they always say I was edited it wasn't the whole conversation you don't need the whole conversation to see body language and the way they're reacting to things so that aside I'm just going to give my two cents and that's all it's worth is two cents I'm not <laughs> I'll just say everything allegedly <laughs> How's that? So let me give you a premise behind the show, just so you can know these characters and kind of know like what's happening. So Love is Blind is a reality show that the premise is, is love blind? Can you meet somebody and fall in love and actually marry them sight unseen? You take these couples and they each go into these pods um, opposite from each other. So they can't see each other. They can hear each other. There's always like cute little food and drinks there. There's a, a couch in there, cushions, blanket, you know, all the things to make them comfortable to open up and start talking to these people. In the beginning, they're all going in the different pods with the opposite um, sex. Like they're going in these rooms and meeting everybody. So right off the bat, they're finding out and they have little notepads, which is great. So they're taking notes. So right off the bat, they're meeting these people and they're like, I kind of like the way this guy sounds. I really like the way he's talking about certain um, issues or things that I like that we have in common. Okay, he's going to the top of the list. I want to talk to him again. So over time, you know, people start pairing off. They start seeing this is someone that I think I could have a relationship with. Gosh, I wonder what he looks like. And so it's this whole premise of like, loving from within <laughs> and not taking the physical into account because a lot of times girls go for like hello me too we went for the bad guys we went for the cute guys we went for the sexy guys like that kind of stuff but here's the thing so right off the bat I'm just going to tell you my two cents on this and I know every Christian woman is going to be like it is all about your insides the outside doesn't matter I am going to say eh, wrong because you have to have some kind of chemical reaction, <laughs> attraction, something to someone you're going to spend the rest of your life with, or it's not going to work. Yes, you look at the inside. I think it's a great premise. You should know somebody's insides well. But I'll tell you, even from this show, no surprise, I'm not giving anything away. I've watched, I think, three seasons of this show now. There's maybe one person out of 14 couples or something like that, you know, like 14 different people that coupled up or 10, whatever it is. And it doesn't work. And not just because of the physical, but I'm just saying, Let's be honest here. You're not going to marry someone you're not attracted to. You have to have some kind of physical attraction because that's part of your emotion. That's part of who you are. It's like, oh, he's cute. Like, I, I want to get to know him. Okay, my poor husband. I'm sorry, honey. I'm going to do this again. He's always like, you always talk about me on the podcast. <laughs> but here's the thing. When I was coming out of my bad marriage, 
I was like, Phyllis, you need to do things differently. And so I made a list. And my list had a lot of qualities that Mike has. But my (laughs) physical list didn't have a lot of qualities that Mike had. For one, I wanted a six foot two guy or at least six feet. My guy was tan and had green or blue eyes and like dark hair. He was like buff, you know, just it. I was very much into the physical part of who a man was. And, you know, my mic is like five, eight <laughs> and blonde and now bald. And he has beautiful hazel eyes, like the biggest, beautiful hazel eyes. And between the two of us, we made the most beautiful daughters with beautiful brown eyes. And, you know, if I had stayed on that list and been like, this is what I want. I'm not going to change in that. Now, the inward qualities was all the things, you know, he showed up, he was loving, he was caring, he's a good dad, like all these qualities that I wanted. He was strong when I needed someone strong, like super good qualities those were all there, but it took time to build this whole trust and relationship. And so I feel like these people go in these pods and it's like, he's everything I want on paper. All the insides are there. And then they meet and they're like, oh, okay. Now I didn't get that impression when I met Mike, I was like, he's cute. He's just not my type like that why this is so weird like I would never pick someone didn't really date a lot of blondes uh in my time like a couple but not most of the time I went for like Latin guys you know that's just my preference but yeah I just you know I was like he's adorable but there was an attraction there there was a a chemical reaction there where I was like I could see myself dating this guy like he's super cute and I married him (laughs) (laughs) but we dated for four years. So here's the thing. This show is rushing these people into situations that they are not ready for. So they get out of the pods and then they, so they have to propose. The guy has to propose if it's someone that he's just like this girl, I like this girl. Like I could see myself spending the rest of my life with her. She feels the same way. He proposes behind the pods. They still haven't seen each other. And she says yes or no. And then they meet for, oh my gosh, it's on the show. It looks like, you know, 30 seconds, but I'm sure they meet for maybe an hour or whatever. They talk about stuff and then they go, okay, we got to go back to our rooms with the other girls and the other guys. And then I will see you the next time they see each other is on a vacation spot. And then all the couples that coupled up get to go on this vacation spot. So a lot of people don't couple up and they end up leaving the show right there, like, didn't find a match, like, you know, don't see myself making this commitment. You go on this vacation spot, now you're together, but you're still having fun. It's in like, it's like the fantasy suites from The Bachelor, right? It's like you're on this beautiful vacation spot, everything looks really fun and great, and you're still not in reality. So sometimes there's some trouble there when they actually start spending time together and they realize like, yeah, there's kind of some differences I'm not really liking. Then if that sticks, they now move in together to a apartment and I think it's three, two or three weeks and then they're planning their wedding. At the ceremony, the day of the wedding, they have a choice to say, yes, I want to marry you or no, I don't. We're going to continue this journey or you know what? Oh, it's been fun, been a fun month, but mm, don't think I want to do that. First of all, that emotional roller coaster does not fly with me. It's like you cannot play with people's emotions like that. And second, I think a lot of these people are coming off of rebound relationships. A few of them are coming off a bad marriage. You can't make a decision like that in a month, like six weeks, whatever it is that they have to do all of this. And it is really... It brings out a lot of emotional things for these couples once they start living together and they go back to their lives and then they're like meeting their friends, they're meeting the parents, they're, they have their jobs, that kind of thing. And so this season they were in South Carolina, they all came from there, lived there, and 
It was really interesting, and I'm just going to hit upon two couples. One is Chelsea and Jimmy, which everyone is talking about on the internet. It's so crazy. Like, social media is going wild over these guys, and there's memes from both sides. One of the things that I noticed with her, we'll just start with Chelsea. One of the things I noticed with her is that there are some deep-seated issues where she doesn't feel confident in who she is as a person physically or otherwise like she has huge trust issues and is very insecure about her looks and is constantly hyper vigilant on checking him out when they're in um, other situations social situations where it's like you talked to her too long you checked out her body you think she's prettier than I am those kind of things and I'm like girl if you can't trust him from the get go, then you can't trust him. Like, and you can't trust yourself, then it's, it's not going to work. Like, uh, one of the things that, that Mike and I did from the very beginning is I said, I'm not your mom. You're not my dad. If I want to go somewhere, I'm not asking your permission. I'm letting you know out of respect, but we didn't want to change everything in our lives because we are together. So what do I mean by this? So one, I will side with Chelsea. She got upset because Jimmy went out without her. He did ask her, he said. she He went to a bar and he saw some of the girls from the show. He didn't see them. They actually saw him. He didn't see the girls. He didn't even know who they were. They texted her. So she knows who all the gar- girls are from the show because she was in, in the hotel, like whatever room that they all dormed with. The guy, the people in the pods don't meet every single person. They meet them behind the pods, so they don't know what they look like. So she knew what they look like. They knew who he was because they, I guess they had gone on social media and checked it out. He didn't check everybody out, so he says. And so he said, I didn't even know that was her. So, so I will say this. When you are in a committed relationship, the days of going to a bar... <laughs> kind of have to be numbered. Now, he's not married yet, and I'll give him that. Um, But also, if you trust yourself and trust your mate, you're not even worried about anything happening. You're just like, okay, cool. You went out. Did you have fun? Like, as long as he's not coming home, like, rip-roaring drunk, that's a whole other issue, right? But I, I have this thing of, like, when you get together with somebody and you enter into marriage... There are certain things you did as a single person that you cannot do as a married person anymore. You just can't. Like, you can, but it's going to cause problems. And so I see a lot of people going, I should be able to do whatever I want. I shouldn't have to change. And I'm like, no, you shouldn't have to in certain areas. But there are certain areas that are very tempting and very um, very much a singles crowd that a married person doesn't need to be in unless you're there with your spouse. Then that's a whole different thing. And also, like, don't really need to be in the bars after you're married like go have a nice dinner go to a I don't know go to a cocktail bar but like you know you don't need to be out drinking on a Thursday Friday Saturday night like those are single days just my opinion but that's that's how I feel about that and then on his side it's like he would beat around the corner of every subject that he really wanted to say it was like he was holding back like he couldn't say what he really wanted to say and I'm like are you doing that because you're on tv or is this really your personality because if this is really your personality we have issues (laughs) because if you can't really speak your mind and say what you want to say then you're not having good communication to really say this I don't like or this, what you told me, hurt my feelings because, not just, you hurt my feelings. How could you hurt my feelings? It's like, how did you hurt your feelings? You know, they had these weird crying, like uh, she was so upset. And I was like, you know, this girl needed to dig through a confidence level in herself that wasn't really there. She had a lot of baggage that was she was holding on to and she was throwing into this relationship and it was kind of like I knew it I knew you were going to do this because everyone does this kind of thing it was that kind of attitude where I was like well if you go into it in fear then yeah it's probably gonna end up that way and also there was two guys that really liked her and the, the second guy that she didn't pick was really someone that was more her personality and more her type 
she picked the first guy that told her, I love you. Will you marry me? She was like, yes, because she was so insecure and afraid that the other guy wouldn't say it to her. She wanted to pick the first person. And he actually, when she went to break up with the second guy, he said, if I had been the first one and asked you, would you have said yes to me? And she said, yes. So that tells me right there, like, you don't even know what you want. Like, you don't even know what, what, you know, what you want out of life. So how can you end up with somebody else? But let me get to the next couple, which is A.D. and Clay, which I was rooting for them and my heart broke because they went, they made it all the way to the altar. But the MVP (laughs) of this show quite frankly, and everyone on social media agrees, was Clay's mom. So Clay came from a broken home. Sounds like it was an abusive home, infidelity, a lot of, just a lot, a lot of stuff. And I was like, solidarity, I feel that. And he was really scared to make a commitment. Now, the good thing about Clay is he knows he needs help. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to therapy. I do need, I need, I have trust issues. I don't believe that marriage lasts forever because look what happened to my parents. His mom came in. Whew, she was amazing. You could tell this woman has done some deep, deep work in herself and knows who she is. And she said, you do not take what we have done and tie that on to your future. I was like, yes, thank you. Perfect. We have these histories and these stories and these traumas that have happened to us since childhood. And we believe that those are truth and that those are things that are going to hold us back from having a happy life. And there is a trust issue, a huge trust issue and big fear that what if I give my whole heart to this person and then they turn around and they leave me. The reality is, is that there is no guarantee in life. You don't know what's going to happen. We go in with faith. We go in with a strong belief system that we are going to get married once. Believe me, I didn't think that I'd have to go through a divorce. But if you ask me honestly, I knew walking down the aisle the first time, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for this. So I kind of put, I set myself up for that. So I'm really proud of him for not taking the next step. I'm really mad at him for waiting until she was putting on the most beautiful dress that she, she was guaranteed. Like he was showing so much love to her. He never told her like, Hey, I'm not sure. He did tell her, you know, I'm, I've got some issues. I have some trust issues. She kept saying, I will hold you. I will help you his mom came in and said, make your own life. Like, don't take the mistakes that we've made and make that as truth. And I was like, yes, thank you, Clay's mama. But at the end of the day, he let that poor girl, AD, walk down the aisle in her beautiful dress, so sure they were going to fight this battle together. They were going to get healthy together. They were going to have a beautiful love story. And at the end, he had her standing there and he said, I can't do it. And he told her, I need to get therapy. Um, I want to continue this journey, but I'm like, Clay, you can't bring somebody to that. She'll never trust you again. When you ask her to marry you again, like you can't, it's, it's not something that, um, you can just wash away and say, Oh yeah. So we almost got married, but Oh, just kidding. And now, Oh, I really mean it this time. Let's get married again. You are forever going to have that fear. Even with someone else, she's going to have that fear. Are they going to leave me at the altar? And ultimately that's what he did. But his mama was there with his dad. They are not together anymore, but they both showed up for the wedding to support him. And Everyone started filing out after he said, no, I can't marry you. AD left. She's crying, of course, with her um, friends, her mom. She was just like, I can't, I got to get out of here. And, and the mom and dad ended up talking about him having this trauma because of what had happened in their relationship. And it was funny because Clay's dad, oh gosh, it was just the best line. So Clay's dad made this comment to the mother and he said, well, I met someone great like you. And that's just what he needs. And she looked at him. Also, she had a fan, which was really like, yes. She took that fan out like, 
She's fanning her face like, oh boy. She responded with, yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good to me. I was like, whoo, kill shot. (laughs) Yeah. So she was a good woman. He met her. He, he loved her, but he still treated her bad and treated her wrong. And so she actually told him, you need to go to your son and you need to tell him that your story is not his story. And then you need to apologize to him with no excuses. I was like, yes, mama. Yes. This is what we need to do. If you were in this situation where you're a divorced mom and you have to go to your children as they're grown because they're going to be afraid. Is love blind? Is it real? Does it last forever? I don't know. You need to go to them or, or the dad needs to go to them and say, don't take what we had and think that that is absolute. It's not. It was our relationship that happened to us. That doesn't mean that you can't go on and marry somebody and have a beautiful life and have it be forever. And so the whole premise of this show really, you know, it comes down to the question, is love blind? I don't think love is blind. (laughs) I think you need to listen to love. I think you need to know when is it okay to fight for someone in your relationship and when is it time to let them go? Are you in have enough love for yourself to honor yourself well enough to not put up with somebody who is not good for you. And also, if you're just not compatible at the end of the day, you've been together for, you know, a month, six months, whatever. And you're like, yeah, it's just not getting better. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just time to call it quits and look for someone who is a little bit better. It doesn't mean you're tied to someone forever just because that's the person you met and you said you're in love with them. You can love somebody. Listen, I've had some great loves in my life and they were not good for me. But I look back at those relationships and I'm like, thank you for showing me along the way what I want and what I don't want. And it didn't work out. And that's okay. I don't have to vilify that person. It's just you're not my person. But when I met Mike, he was my person, like physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, like everything was lined up and it grew as time went on. It was not all 100%. We had to let that stuff build and grow over the years. And so when I look at where we were at the beginning, 35 years ago this year, I believe. Yeah. We've been together forever. We were together for four years before that. I think we've been together for 40 years, which blows my mind because I'm only 20. But (laughs) I just look back. I was looking at pictures the other day because we're getting ready to do my dad's memorial. And I, it brought tears to my eyes because I'm like, we did, we've lived this whole life. Like, look at all these memories and all this stuff. But then I can look at those pictures and remember like, Ooh, that was a really hard time right there. So even though we were smiling for the camera, I was like, that was hard. That was a hard year. I can look at other things and go, yeah, I just remember Mike being so exhausted during that time. I can look at other things and go, yeah, I was being so insecure in my own life at that time. And I look to now And it's like, I think we are in the healthiest place we are now when we're getting older and we can't do anything. (laughs) It's like now that we want to have fun, we're like, everything hurts. (laughs) So we, we'd have a blast laughing at certain things because we're just like, life is crazy because just when you're having fun and you got it all together emotionally and mentally, you're like, yeah, physically we can't do all that fun stuff because you know, it's just, it's going to hurt if we do. It's going to hurt even more. We might hurt ourselves if we do it, but we have so much fun just doing just what we can. You know, we go out and do some adventures or we just take a walk on the beach and we're totally happy with that. And so look toward the future too. Like, is this someone you just want to like stroll a beach with or go in a car ride or sit on a couch on a Friday night and have um, a steak dinner and watch a movie and have a cocktail and just enjoy the company of that person. 
that's when you know love isn't blind. (laughs) It can see and it can build and it can breathe. And so anyway, just my little two cents. It was a a fun show. Tonight is the reunion. I can't wait. (laughs) And and so um, I just like to deep dive into these different personalities and things once in a while, because I think it really helps, especially if you are a gal out there that is single or maybe in a relationship and you're kind of looking at it like, yeah, I really love him, but I don't know. There's this and this. It's like, you better start talking about it now or figuring it out now because this is your guy for the next 40 plus years. If you decide to make a go of it with him and you certainly don't want to enter into something and then two years down the road say it's not working. Um, I can tell you from past experience, that was the worst thing I ever did was have to walk out of a marriage and, um, and proclaim fault in that. So anyway, that is my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys next time. Bye peeps.